Hey church, today I'm sharing about uh, two scriptures that are in the Old Testament and a little bit obscure, but have a great truth. A lot of the times, some of the greatest truths of the Bible are the hardest to understand or in fairly obscure passages that we don't look at. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 19. The men of Jericho said to Elisha, Behold now, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. And Elisha said, Bring me a new jar, put salt in it. They brought it to him. He went out to the spring of water and threw salt in it, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have purified these waters. There shall no longer be from their death or unfruitfulness. So the waters are pure to this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. And then going two chapters forward, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse uh, 38. When Elisha returned to Gilgal, there was a famine in the land. The sons of the prophets were sitting before him. He said to his servant, put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. Then one came out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it his lap full of wild gourds and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, for they did not know what they were. So they poured it out for the men to eat. It came about as they were eating the stew, they cried out and said, O man of God, there's death in the pot. And they were unable to eat. But Elisha said, Now bring meal. And he threw it into the pot. And he said, Pour it out for the people that they may eat. Then there was no harm in the pot. These stories are pretty cool, aren't they? And they're similar. First of all, you have water that's too bitter to drink uh, in Jericho. And then you have food that's poison, that people are hungry, they want to eat, but there's poison in it. And Elisha had a similar um, plan each time. The first time he said, throw some salt into, get me some salt. He threw some salt in the water. The second time, he said, get me some meal, probably cornmeal or something, and threw that into the bowl, and both were fine afterwards. The water was pure, the spring was pure, and by the way, if you go on a trip to Israel, you'll probably go to Jericho and you see this very spring. It's a huge spring of water, which uh, takes care of the whole city in the middle of the desert. It's really quite a remarkable place. But the Bible tells us that Elisha purified that and then, of course, the meal purified the pot. Things were cured. I want to spiritualize this. When I think of this, I think of things in our life. We all have things that have gone bad, bad memories, maybe health issues, a financial reverse, maybe a relationship which has gone bad. But God wants to restore it. And God can restore it so it's in great shape. That's what happened in Gilgal and Jericho. All we need to do is get a plan. I think it's interesting that when people said something to Elisha, God gave him a plan and said, this is what you need to do to fix the waters of this city or to fix this pot so you can eat it. And church, I would just remind you, and I think you probably know this, that whatever the challenges are in your water, maybe the bitter waters or the bitter pot, the bitter food, the things you've been through, the difficulties, things that have hurt you and marked you and wounded you, maybe even started to poison you, God would heal them. Ask God and say, God, show me your plan to restore the bitter waters or the bitter food, and God will do it, just as he did with Elijah. Great little story, great little story. This Sunday, of course, is Father's Day, and we're going to highlight not just fathers, but all men over 18. We've got a lot of great men in the church, and we're highlighting uh, a man in each service who's a fantastic guy and a great father. We, we have a special ensemble that'll be singing. We have a really cool gift. Can you guess what's in this box? It's something really cool you want. Only one per person, and I love it, and I'm glad I got mine already. Uh, and that'll go to any man who's present. And then I got a special message for us dads. I'm gonna talk about the power of a father's blessing. Men, do you know the greatest thing you can leave your kids 
is not money, a car, a house. Those are good things. A skill, that's a good thing. But your blessing. People in the Bible blessed their children while they were still alive. And I'm going to talk about that because it's such a powerful thing, the blessing of a father. Do you know even Jesus got the blessing of his father before he started ministry? So I'll talk about how you can pass along a blessing to your kids. You don't want to miss this message. I'm excited about it. Next week, the week after, we have a special speaker, Jermel Mayo, formerly from Newark, and uh, he's an evangelist. He's spoken at a lot of youth events. Uh, youth, I think you all know him, uh, camps and conventions and things, and he'll be with us in our service, Sunday morning, both services, Latino, and then Sunday night. We'll have an old-fashioned evangelist with us next week, and we're excited about that. And then, of course, our Freedom Fest is coming up on July 4th. July 4th, as you know, is a Sunday. We're going to have our services outdoors. And I can tell you, it is beautiful, perfect weather here today. We're believing July 4th will be the same. So hope you can come to that. After the later service, we'll have a time of fellowship together, a barbecue. Uh, if you are coming and can sign up and bring some food, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs available. But if you can bring some food, that'll really, really help us as well, bring a side dish. So that's what I want to say today, church. God bless you. We love you. And by the way, it was great to see. Must have been five families back last Sunday who we hadn't seen for like a year. So if you're still hanging out uh, home, if you can make it out, come back. I encourage you to. Uh, it was so great to catch up with people and reconnect with a lot of people who are back in church Sunday. God bless you.